now we're into the home stretch. You're making those last few strides towards the finish line and completing your flight test. In this section, we're going to take a look at some of the questions that you might end up getting in your flight test, specifically when it comes to the operational knowledge bit. Now, for those of you who are maybe, you know, just about to cross the ribbon of that finish line, I want you to do a lot of refresher work. And that refresher work is going to include these two prominent documents. Well, maybe I should add another one because in addition to the aeronautical information manual, and of course the CAP gen here, you're also going to have the CAP that is applicable towards your specific approach plates that you're using. Now that said, these two here, because they're full of rules, and operational knowledge is a lot of rules, you're going to want to spend a lot of time in here and know what it is that they say. So the operational knowledge portion of your flight test allows you to demonstrate your knowledge of IFR procedures that are necessary for your safe flight. Now, questions are going to include things like IFR minima, well, as I mentioned earlier, rules, and as well, guidelines. So, know your alternates. Know how those approach charts work. Know as well the various procedures that you're going to utilize as you fly. Now, it's more than just knowing about the rules. Remember, you're going to be made to think about how those rules apply to your situation. Or perhaps maybe you'll have variables like weather or equipment that is starting to fail. So now you're going to need to know how those rules apply to your specific situation or situations. Now that said, the examiner, as they give you those situations, they might see things in the weather or the equipment that you have, or maybe the ways that an air traffic controller could clear you, and they're going to start to create situations. Now, many of these situations, as hard as you may think, and as much as you may try to brainstorm to say, well, maybe this could happen, or what if this happened, that examiner is going to come up with something that maybe you're not prepared for entirely. Because, well, they have a lot more experience than you do, a lot more hours than you do, and they've actually seen real things in real life. So they'll probably come up with those scenarios and then test your thinking ability and your decision-making ability. So when they come up with a scenario, even if you haven't thought of it, Typically, because of your superior knowledge and extensive study habits when it comes to rules, you'll probably be able to think through it. So, in this presentation, because we realize that we cannot come up with every potential scenario or every possible question, we're only doing this to give you a little bit of the flavor of what you might be asked. Perhaps, as you go through this presentation, you might actually come up with questions of your own. Oh, maybe they could ask this, or, oh, look at that. Uh, maybe I could be asked this. And that's good, because you are thinking, and that's what you need to do in the test. Now, one of the things with operational knowledge is true. It is partly experience. As you fly in the IFR world more and more, you're going to get more and more experience. You're going to be like, oh, you know what? I, I, I saw that once, so I, I know how that works. For instance, the first time I ever went into a Class E control zone, I remembered how I ended up getting the clearance. And when I was asked that on my flight test, I was like, oh, yes, I remember exactly how that works. Now, that said, flying is very, very expensive. So you can't really afford, particularly when you're training, to just fly a whole bunch to get that operational knowledge. So the second part of operational knowledge is really just a lot of study items. Know the rules, and then state how they might apply to you. Time spent studying is cheap, particularly when you compare it to the time that you spend flying. That's a lot of dollars and cents. 
So it makes a lot more sense to study as much as you can. Now, for the rest of the presentation, we're going to continue on our theme with our cross country from Winnipeg to Barron's River. We're also going to assume that you've watched all of the other presentations prior to this one. So as you go through this particular presentation, there's going to be a lot of times where maybe we don't specifically point to a chart, or maybe we don't specifically mention a fuel burn, or a distance, or a time. We're assuming that you've already looked at the other sections here prior to getting to this one. So if you haven't done that, it might be best to take a look at some of those previous presentations, just so that when I talk about some of the specifics, you're like, oh, okay, I understand why that is because I have the context.